Uh, okay, I'll be speaking about GitHub Actions and workflows today, and it is about Angular. So there will be some Angular specific things, and we'll end up uh, demonstrating um, a GitHub workflow for an Angular repo, and that's public uh, on GitHub. So you'll be able to check it out yourself afterwards. And first, we're actually going to talk about the different concepts that you need to learn first, and then a basic introduction and a few like the structure of how it's it's made up and so on. Let's begin. The name GitHub Actions is a bit um, inconvenient because it's marketed and branded as GitHub Actions, but there's actually two things that are important to understand here. And one is workflows, and the other one is actions, the actual actions. So when you click the Actions tab in GitHub, you'll be seeing workflows with actions in them, but you won't be seeing the actions in the Actions tab itself. So that's a bit confusing. So, <laughs> so trying to differentiate here between workflows that you can use for CI or CD on GitHub runners, or you can even have event-driven workflows, for example, triggered by a webhook or a PR commit or a tag or release or a comment or anything, uh, any event that happens in GitHub. And a few other things can be triggers as well as, as we'll see in, in a moment. And the other concept that's important here is the actual GitHub actions. And they can be third-party actions from the GitHub Marketplace or custom actions specific to your project or your organization that you can create yourself. And there's a few ways to create these. So first up is GitHub Workflows. This is what they look like structurally. It, you will see in a moment it's a YAML file, um, a really inconvenient language, but it's being used anyways. <laughs> so to have a workflow, uh, you definitely need to give it a name. That name will show up in the github.com uh, visualization, the Actions tab. Uh, so workflows in the Actions tab again. <laughs> and you have to give it a few triggers for when should this workflow be run. You can add some environment variables, and then you add some jobs, one or more jobs per workflow. These are some of the built-in triggers. You can have a schedule timer. You can have a manual trigger that's called the workflow dispatch event or trigger. You can have a webhook. You can um, trigger it on a push to a certain branch or all branches. You can trigger a workflow on a pull request or any commit to a pull request. And you can, commit, uh, you can start or trigger a workflow on an issue or any event in that issue. Or when someone creates a fork of your repo, you can even uh, trigger a workflow. And here's some more built-in uh, GitHub-specific uh, triggers for your workflows. And there's a public project called Actions Flow, which adds some more interesting triggers, like you can see here. Maybe whenever you post something on Instagram, you'll like a GitHub workflow to, <laughs> to run for some reason. Maybe you'll use that for your so other social media accounts or or may maybe based on the weather, you'll post something on Twitter. I don't know. And there's even more here, like uh, several social media platforms can, you can trigger GitHub workflows and you can certainly also create a bot to post on those platforms. So interesting stuff uh, in, with GitHub workflows, right? A job in a workflow looks a bit like this structure-wise. You have an image, which is the operating system. You have the three big operating systems to choose from, uh, an Ubuntu server, a Windows server, or a Mac OS. That makes it really convenient if you want to test or, or build or run anything uh, cross-platform. Then you can sh uh, share some environment variables uh, for every step of that jobs. Because next, we'll have one or more steps in that job. And then they can have some dependencies, meaning this job runs this job runs after the other job and not before. We can even have a few uh, output values if, if we need that further down in the workflow. Here's the basic workflow. So we set up the, the build uh, job. This is our first job. It runs on an Ubuntu server. And the first step here is a checkout action. And the way we read this is actions is actually a repository on github.com forward slash actions. That's an actions, or sorry, the actions is the organization on GitHub. At checkout is the repository. So actions is an, a GitHub organization owned by GitHub. 
So those are kind of the official actions, but there are some from Azure as well and, and some open source ones. Uh, for example, one from ng worker that I'm part of called angular versions action that you, you could check out. But this checkout action will take the source code from your repository and pull it into or clone or, or what's it called? Yeah, pulling pulling the source code into this GitHub runner because every job starts from scratch on, an, for example, here an Ubuntu image, like it has a few things, but any code any tools, you have to install that in steps yourself. So the first thing is usually uh, pulling down the, or checking out right the, the source code. So we can work on that. Um, then we can have GitHub action steps, uh, like the one we, we just saw actually. It can be a local one or it can be a remote one. So from the web, or it can be a local files. The one we just saw was actually from GitHub, so that's a remote action. You can specify a version. We can optionally give it some parameters, and we can even get some result out of it that we can use uh, in another job in the workflow. Optionally, we can give it a name too that will come on, uh, that will be displayed on github.com. So this is what an action step looks like. Here we are setting up a specific version of Node.js using the setup node action from the actions GitHub organization. And we're giving it an input parameter here that we want uh, Node 14, uh, any version of Node 14, the latest probably, um, installed in our GitHub runner here so that in the next step we can uh, run a build command. Other kinds of steps is the run step. We can provide it a shell. By default, it will be OS dependent, but we can specify, for example, Bash or Windows PowerShell or PowerShell Core, which will be available across operating systems. We can optionally um, set an, a working directory for the command because the next and most important thing is the terminal command for this run step. And optionally, we can give it a name that will be shown in the github.com uh, interface. So this is an example of the run step. We call it build this step. And here I'm using pnpm, which is a faster version of npm uh, to run the build script from my package.json file. So this is a run step. We can set conditions on the job level or on the step level um, and <laughs> this is, uh, sorry, this is Danish, means conditions. <laughs> um, so here we have a lint job. And as you can see on the highlighted line, it will only be run if this is a pull request trigger. So if it's, uh, say, a push to the main branch after merge, we will not be running linting because it's too late to do anything about it and shouldn't, uh, shouldn't break uh, deployment, for example, just because of a lint check. Now we're getting to GitHub Actions. Some example usage here. You could use it for many things. Uh, you can send an HTTP request with an action. You can install dependencies in a work workflow job. You can send reports, send emails, comment and pull requests, even manage a cloud environment. There's many, many use cases, and that's quite interesting. An action configuration is structured this way. Uh, it has a name, a description, uh, it can have inputs. It can also have outputs, but it doesn't have to ha have either inputs or outputs. And then we specify a type and an environment for the action. There's actually three different types of, of uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, when we're using them, we, know, we don't need to know about them because they have the same interface for using them. But if, we're want, to, if we want to implement them ourselves, uh, we can choose from these three options. Docker container actions, JavaScript actions, and composite run steps actions. And we'll learn a bit about all of them. Here's the Docker container actions. Right now, they only support Linux containers. Uh, so they, they won't support Windows uh, uh, containers. Uh, when you create a Docker container action, you will have the complete environment included with the action. So it doesn't 
depend on external dependencies, that those will be bundled with the action. So there's nothing, uh, it doesn't need to run in a specific OS or has have something installed beforehand. And, and downside of using container, Docker container actions is you don't have direct access to the file system in the GitHub runner. Uh, so you'll have to add that as, as parameters to, to the container um, if you, you're using a container action. However, they are easy to test locally if you know Docker, of course, but because they come with this environment, you don't need to install uh, anything in your local machine except for a uh, container engine to test them out. However, they are a bit slower than the other action types uh, because it takes some time to start up a container with an environment, although they are, of course, faster than virtual machines. They are slower than running Node.js scripts or command lines uh, options. Input values are a bit difficult. They have to be forwarded to the container in a special way that we'll, we'll see next. And output values, they have to be set using terminal commands inside of the container. So there's a bit of more boilerplate when using Docker container actions. Here's an example. And um, the top part is the specification of the action, but we're interested here in the bottom, the highlighted lines, because here we see that we're, this is a Docker container action. And we're using this Docker file, which is the, well, maybe you know a, a Docker file. That's the recipe for the container. And next we can see an example of having an input. Uh, so this is the input that the, the consumer of our action has passed to our action. And then it, here it's being forwarded to, um, to the container. This is an example of a container image. So it's running a script. Let's go and see inside of that script. Looks like so. So here we're using this input that we forwarded from the consumer into the container. And on the bottom highlighted line is an example of an output. So this is a special uh, terminal command that can only be run inside of a, a GitHub Actions runner. Next up is JavaScript Actions. This is using Node.js. So we have the benefit of using NPM packages. We have access to the file system of the workflow job. It is locally testable by using environment variables with this input underscore pattern and all uppercase. We have direct access to input and output values through some special packages. It's faster than Docker container actions. It's even faster than a composite uh, run step calling a Node.js script because it has some, some better integration. But it's using a dated Node.js version, version 12. Uh, so that's a bit of a downside. Uh, you can uh, use a composite run steps action if you want a newer version of, of Node.js, but then you're missing out on, on some other benefits. Um, here's a set of NPM packages that can be used if you're creating a JavaScript GitHub action. We have one for build artifacts, managing them, caching dependencies and build outputs, input output values, logging and secrets, we have a package for process management, one for file system IO, and one which is basically wrapping the Octokit client for GitHub so that you can get the metadata about PRs and commits and comments and, and all that stuff from GitHub. So here's an, another Danish word, unfortunately. I hope you can guess that this should have been a C. Then it says configuration. <laughs> so in the bottom highlighted lines, we can see that this is where we specify it's using Node 12 as the engine, and we're calling the index.js file. So this is how we specify the JavaScript or Node.js um, GitHub action. Finally, we have the composite run steps action, and it looks like so. It has one or more run steps, but it doesn't have access to the file system. It can be combined with terminal scripts, and you can execute any arbitrary program that can be run from the command line. So you can actually combine it with scripts and programming languages that are executable straight from the command line. It is, however, a little difficult to use input and output values. I have a video showing how to do it, but it's a, it's a bit difficult, but it can be done. 
And the benefit here is you can use Node.js scripts with recent versions of Node.js. You can even use other programming languages. So it's a bit more universe, universal um, without having to use Docker. And here's another Danish configuration title. <laughs> so uh, here we see in the highlighted line, we're using a composite um, GitHub action. And then we specify some steps directly here in our YAML action configuration. So next we see an example of how to pass inputs or accept inputs from the consumer of this action and how to return some output values. Also using this special set output command in the terminal. Now, one of the last things here is a demo, uh, but maybe Stephen, you could tell me how many minutes are remaining. You can take 10 minutes, uh, Lars. Okay, I'll do five minutes demo and maybe we'll have time for a few questions. So I created this repo. Uh, I hope you can see it or zoom in one more time. Uh, this is my page on GitHub. I have this repository called GitHub Actions Angular. I set up uh, an Angular CLI workspace. And then this is the command I used. Then I added a GitHub uh, CI workflow. It's conventionally named the .github folder and then have a subfolder of workflows. This is where we'll put our workflows. So any YAML file in this folder will be uh, registered by the GitHub Actions, which is actually workflows. So here is an example of a CI workflow. It has a, I'm going to zoom in a bit more. It has uh, the name here that we will see in a moment in Actions. It has a few environment variables. And here are the triggers. So it triggers on a pull request for any branch or a push, so after a merge. Um, on the main branch or this workflow dispatch, which, which is the manual trigger. Uh, so we can click a button inside of the actions tab and, and we can trigger a workflow. Here we have the lint job running uh, only on pull requests using PowerShell core, checking out the source code, setting up Node.js, the version we specified in the environment variable that will be version 14.x. Then we have some caching here. I won't go into details about that, but that makes uh, caches the yarn and uh, node modules. Then we can run yarn install to install all our Angular dependencies. And finally, we can run lint. Here's the build job. It has a similar setup uh, with, with uh, Node.js and caching, yarn install. And finally, we can run build. And after the build, we will actually upload a build artifact, name it Angular app. And here's the path that we're going to package up. If there are no files, this action or this step will actually throw an error. So the uses uh, means that it's a GitHub action step. The run means that it's a run step inside of this job. So what are we going to do with this Angular app package? We're going to use it a bit later. First, we're going to run the tests. But notice that all these jobs are actually running in parallel, which we'll see in a moment. Uh, here's the important bit about test. We're running a CI test script from package.js. And finally, we have deploy here. And here we're using a condition that says only if you're on the main branch and it's a workflow dispatch, that's the manual trigger, or a push to the main branch, then this deploy job will be run. And we'll go ahead, go ahead and download the build artifact named Angular app, unzip it to a folder called Angular app. Then we're going to use the Azure Web Apps Deploy action. And here's the name, which is in an environment variable. And we have also set up a secret with a published profile with credentials for Azure Web App Services. And here's the package we're going to deploy. Uh, the final thing is something called Sonar Cloud. Um, uh, you can explore that uh, on your own. Uh, this is a bit of, of, of boilerplate and some special scripts to convert reports and feed them into Sonar Cloud. Uh, both GitHub Actions and Sonar Cloud has uh, OSS licenses. So if you have public code, uh, you're good. You have uh, free usage. 
uh, here's an example of a pull request. And here's the sonar cloud telling us that we have a few issues. There's no test coverage and there's a couple of code smells. So we will be unable to merge this pull request. Here's the different jobs being run. And if we go into the details, here's a quick overview of, uh, so this view is not very good. Let me go to actions. Okay, here we can see the different jobs in our workflow. And we can see deploy depends on build, but it wasn't run. It was skipped for this pull request. Test failed. Everything else went great. So that was what I want to show you here in the demo. Um, uh, well, this is just uh, repeating what we already saw. Workflows and actions. Workflows can be triggered. Uh, there's three types of actions. You don't really need to know about that when using them, except uh, keep in mind that you can create them yourselves or you can find some on GitHub Marketplace. We have a lot of built-in tr triggers uh, for workflows, GitHub triggers, action flows, triggers. These three types of uh, actions, you need to know this if you want to uh, create them yourself. But that's about it. Thank you for listening. <laughs>